Oh yeah, this is a video on how to chew up a bowl. Uh, it's not a definitive what you do because behind my finger is a big mistake that I just did in the last uh, last few uh, moments of actually doing the bowl. It's a scuff. When I went to sign the, bot uh, sign the bottom of the bowl, I was like this with the drill because the camera was above me and I, the rotation of the drill I skipped off and I skipped uh, and I skidded across it I didn't notice until I got it down and it was more secure on the table and I was sand, uh, sanding down and holding the drill with both hands I didn't notice until then and that was off camera and I swore quite a bit because at that point I took the tenon off <laughs> So I can't put it back on, sand it all off and then restart again. So I'm going to have to spot repair that somehow with some wax. But the whole bowl is 320 grit and that is 180. So I'm just going to have to mask that somehow. Uh, thankfully this is just for me and it's not for someone else. Uh, but this video is all about chewing up. So originally you'll, you'll see anyway from the first scenes. This is wet turned uh, quite a few months ago. I can't remember now because now I've took the bottom off, I've lost the markings. But um, it was turned quite a few months ago, soaking wet, it was on overload. And it dried, obviously went like a rugby ball. And this video is all about how to, how to chew it up with the chucking and everything. So hopefully you get something from it. Um, and hopefully you get a result that doesn't have mistakes. Like that stupid mistakes when you're tired when you've had enough and you just want to get in and get warmed up so enjoy uh, first of all I've got to chew up the tannin it's silver birch um, it's gone very oval so what I do is I stick the jaws in well the chuck the jaws on that I'm going to be uh, that's going to fit the tannin or well, the tanner's going to fit in it. When it's done, I'll just stick some uh, stick something that's conf uh, that conforms. In expansion mode. The reason why is because it's warped. It's not circular on the inside. So the first thing I do is I've got the centre. Always remember when you're turning, obviously. Put a little uh, little mark in the centre so you can centre it up easier. The centre is a little bit softer than what it was before. So. Should have put a pencil mark there as well. So that's that mounted. And I'll get my spindle gouge, stick it on. Well, turn the speed off and turn it on as slow as speed it up. Everything's locked down. You don't want to shave too much off, obviously, because it's still got to fit in the chuck. That's about right. I could still go a little bit less to get the full circumference. But I think just that little bit there that isn't quite chewed up yet is superficial. It's more important to actually get it to fit the chuck. So that's now been chewed up a little bit. I'll you know, I don't have to. I'll just knock that down a little bit as well. Uh, let's chuck the base.
that's that done. And now what I can do is hopefully it doesn't warp too much. It's always good, good to make a tenon slightly bigger than what you actually need it to be when you're wet turning. So you've got scope for chewing up. That does feel a bit small. Yeah, it's about perfect. So that's the tenon done. Ooh. That is very. Right now it's mounted in the chuck. Securing the chuck tightly down a little bit more actually. I want to chuck the rim now. So with the bowl gouge with the flute at nine o'clock as I'm looking in that direction. Flute at three o'clock even, not nine o'clock, three o'clock. It's just taking that rim down carefully. Now with some wood, with silver birch I can see where I've been and where I haven't. And I've still got to take it down a little bit more because there's a section there that isn't true yet. Um, good thing to do, some woods you can't see where you've been and where you haven't because the, the wood doesn't oxidise that much. So what you do is you just put a pencil mark there. <coughs> then when you take it off, when you take a layer off, You take the pencil off as well. Any pencil that you see hasn't been chewed up yet, and there's still a bit of pencil there. Not bothered about getting a smooth cut yet, just taking it down so I can see if it's worth saving or not. I'm smoothing it off a little bit but it doesn't have to be a perfect finish because you're going to be taking most of that away anyway. Right, at that stage to see if it's worth saving or not. Now, I don't know how you rough turn, but I always have a thinner rim and it gets fatter on the way down. The reason why is I like to have a curved transition on the inside, but a steeper outside. So I, so I know also when I'm chewing up, that if, I'm, if I haven't got enough rim, if the rim disappears, then I can always just take the bowl down a little bit, uh, a little bit shallower. And then sooner or later I'll get to a bit of the wall that's fat enough that's going to actually give me a rim. Now some woods, as you're more than likely know, warp a lot more than others. So until you've turned certain species, I mean silver birch, I know it does warp quite a bit, but it's like a medium warp. Lime, that goes ridiculous, it goes like a rugby ball. So you need to uh, leave the walls on lime wider than you would on silver birch, say. So what I do is I get the pencil, in the inner circle at the moment and now the outer so now I know you can see there now that line is very close to the edge there, but you've got a lot there to come off. You've got a lot there, not much there, and you've got a lot there, not much there, obviously. So what I do now, now I know that I can actually keep the rim where it is, 
Let's chop a little bit of the outside. And I'll do the inside first. With a pencil lines you also see where you need to go to get trued up. That's a beautiful wood. I love silver birch. Right, that's that's central. And because it's close to the rim, you need to go with a flute again at three o'clock, but straight in. Uh, st straight in temporarily. Just uh, just that little bit until you get a rim and then you can turn it round again. For going at 45 degrees like that you'll just skip across the rim. That's it. Nice. Another thing that I like to do if it's really when it's really wobbly. Stick the light on. Not very organised, am I? I shear scrape for part of it. In fact, I use the bigger gouge. I just shear, shear scrape for a little bit, just to knock the edges off. close around and I'll go in with a flute at about 45 degrees I'll do a smoothing Pencil, slow speed. there in the middle. You can take a bit more off from about there. Bottom gouge. It's got a steeper, uh, steeper grind on it. It isn't fingernail. Like that one's fingernail, and that one's much steeper to get to the bottom. Uh, get the bottom of the bowl.
think this one needs a sharpen. <laughs> right, this next section that I'm going to show you is a different technique that I've got because obviously, because I swap this round quite often, you don't want to be taking bowls or any item off a chalk too often. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with um, chewing it all up and getting it all like the inside and the outside all chewed up and whatnot. You could, of course, use a live centre if you've got a live centre that's wide enough for the uh, for the bore and the chop, and just basically push it, uh, push it with a live centre instead. But I prefer, to be honest, to have it secure, a bit more secure than that. So I'm just going to wind the chuck on. And et voila. Yeah, one thing to remember if you're doing this, there's a hell of a lot of weight here on that, on just the M, uh, 2MT, so you can actually wobble it up and down a little bit. That's the bearing inside there, so if you stick it on a slow speed, Slower speed that your lathe will accept. You just wind it on slowly. It will self centre itself. That's it. Too much pressure. Right, you have to be very careful here with speed. Normally I do bowls that's got a wider base, so I'm, so when I'm like this, I'm not near the chuck. Technically, it's a live centre and it's friction there, so it's not like it's the other way around, but still stay out of the way of the chuck as much as you can. I'd like to take that rim down a little bit more because that's still quite fat. That's still, let's see, still about five millimeters. Uh, that's done. I can uh, reverse it back round again without taking it off the chalk.
I always do that. It looks rough, but because you've got a thin rim, you'll get major chatter if you try to shape the rim when it's that thin. Um, obviously, when you're turning with a dry blank, you can shape it as you go along, but when it's wet turning, you've already got a thin rim. You've got nothing on the inside of it. So you get major chatter there. So I always like to contour it with a bit of shear scraping. And then when you sand it, that'll go nice and smooth. So I really like that. So next stage is the sanding. Right, I made this decision. And then colour it. I'm not going to go mad though. Just going to do one colour throughout. I don't use paper towel for colouring because it just turns to pulp. The paper towel does. So use these like jade cloth, uh, jade cloths or spontex. Ooh, I love amber. Be careful, you don't need to get any on the chuck. This is water based stain, it's not spirit stain. So it takes a little bit longer to dry, but that's okay. Now comes the Danish oil. It's just Danish oil in a mason jar. I've burnished it, or not burnished it, it's just soft. I, I, turned it, uh, I turned it fairly fast and just got a paper towel and just, uh, just rubbed over it while it was spinning, just to get rid of any raised grain. I've used, I've used sandpaper before, really fine sandpaper, and all I ended up doing is just taking some of the uh, wood off. And end up with lines. Now this is obviously because it's bare wood. I've decided not to put cedar on first. I've decided to put oil on first. Look at that. That's coming up. Silver, uh, silver birch. It's gorgeous. Now, I spent probably about an hour on this chuck, cleaning all the oil and all the crap off the, uh, off the chuck. So if you've got another way that you prefer to do it off the chuck, fair enough. But I don't at the moment, so I'm being careful where I put the oil. I don't want oil splattered all over the uh, all over the jaws because it's quite hard to get it out of the ridges. So just putting it on, you can see it soaking it in straight away on the end grain, not so much on the face. So you're just concent I'm concentrating more on the end grain than the side. Put some on the inside as well because this is obviously going to try to soak it all the way through to the inside. So if you stick some on the inside as well, which you are going to do eventually anyway, it's soaking in from both sides. And I'll keep on doing that because you get the gist anyway what I'm doing, just wiping oil on. I'll come back to you because I haven't got much space left on the card. Right, it's been a little bit of a wow, well, it's been a lot longer than I wanted it to be to finish this bowl. It's now about a couple of weeks. So I've got dust on my hands. It's been a couple of weeks now since uh, I last put some oil on it. I subsequently put more oil on it. There's um I put about three coats of oil on, something like that. The last coat of oil that I put on, I forgot to wipe off the excess. Um, I wiped a little bit off, but I didn't wipe it off properly. As you can see here, 
um, it's a little bit patchy and it's very dull in places there's a patch there look I don't know if you can see it on the camera where it's polymerized on the surface a little bit more around here it's very dull uh, because more than I could wipe off a little bit more there than what I did round here that's side green actually thinking about it so it that's where it was obviously sitting on the surface and it soaked in more there now um, <coughs> like I say I put about three coats of them out on this and it wasn't accepting anymore it was just basically standing so I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do is now, I'm going to use the abrasive paste and that should sort out the polymerised um, oil as well. Now the first coat of abrasive paste, I say the first coat, more often than not, I only put one coat on and then one coat's needed. Um, I do put a liberal amount on, a fair bit, because it's very cheap, it's homemade, it's not like buying tinned stuff already made up that's damn expensive, and I obviously do both sides at the same time, I don't just do one side and then the other, I need to get myself a wider neck jar I think, for the next one. Or mix it up into tins myself. And then what I do is I stick the blade on a slow speed just to spread it out. Being careful of the chill covers here with your fingers. It puts more on the rag or towel so it can go around on the inside. Just swirl it round. The same patch, obviously, that you applied it with. Put on a fair speed, dependent on the piece that you're turning, obviously, you might not want to spin at a thousand RPM. Now, this is rather grippy, and it does like to tear, <laughs> tear the rag or paper towel. I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on. Let's get a clean bit. Dependent on the wood that you turn, you turn like a real soft wood, punky. You might want to stop. So I mean, it's it's bringing quite a bit off. And just go around in a circle again. And just so you don't end up with lines effectively. I mean, I've put a fair bit on this one because I have polymerized oil. If you do a better job of oiling than what I do, you might not need so much. Obviously when it gets smoother it doesn't tear the paper so much. If you're still taking stain off, it means you're still taking wood off. Because the stain is obviously that was fully dry, and then there's three coats of oil on. So well, you're still getting uh, quite a bit of stain on the rag, 
is still taking wood off, so it's still got uh, the abrasive paste there. You can see it's getting less and less now. Seems like a bit of a faff around. Seems like a major faff to do this and a lot of work, but it looks really, really nice because it sends it up a lot higher grit than what you potentially want to do just for normal sandpaper. And a damn sight cheaper and quicker than using high grit sandpaper. So I mean, virtually nothing coming off now. Not a lot. Of, not a lot at all. Just one more pass, and we'll have a look. Because it's very close to the chuck, I don't really want to go around the corner of the rag. So that does need a little bit of a tidy up anyway. Right, for the wax. I've had this tin for nearly a year. I bought this and virtually not, I've used it a little bit. I forgot about it and I've been trying all the waxes out. So I'm going back to this. See how this looks. really do that with stain, putting the stain in your wax. Turn it over so you've got a clean section. You can probably tell by the sound of me that I've got a bunged up nose and sinuses. It has been worse over the last week. It's getting better but I've still got Still got dodgy sinuses. I just always stick the blade on a slow speed just to spread it out, just to make sure I haven't missed any spots. That's a bit fast. Not as shiny. It's not as shiny in the face grain. But it's shinier in the end grain. It's more of a smooth transition. I mean before it's got still got some nice chatoyants in the face grain. But before it was very shiny on the face grain and not that shiny on the end grain. But now using the brush, it's it's smoothed it out a bit. It's brought up, it's pepped up the end grain a little bit more and dulled the side grain. So I think I prefer that, to be honest, than a patchy shine. And it's nice and even on the inside as well, if not shinier on the inside. It seems shinier on the inside, but that's the light you know what I mean you get more curved on this you get the I'm just getting one strip whereas in that it's more the lights being reflected around the inside so I like that quite a bit now 
so I think I'll put on, uh, another couple of coats on that and then uh, come back to you once I've took the foot off right I'll, I'll record this taking the foot off I've live centered it I've, uh, I've got a divot a little hole in the centre of the tenon so I know where the centre is this is just a uh, friction drive and a bit of paper towel in between I've, oh, I've already torn the edges off so it's not annoying me so it looks about 700 not going to go too far otherwise obviously because it's supported by the tail stop Foot. The speed of that is about 900. What I did was, I've um, that nub in the middle. I took it off. And I just got a uh, pair of pliers and I just twisted it off. Now I've got power sanding arbor, 180 grit. This is going to be awkward for me because I'm stretched out like this. Because it's on the camera. Yeah. I mean it's coming off I should get the idea, I'm going round like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down properly, um, secure it properly, and then go round and sand that properly, and I'll come back to you. Right, that's it, I've put some sealer on the bottom of it, um, so you can see how shiny, uh, how smooth it is. I like to keep the bottom like that and not stain it or, any, uh, or anything because uh, then it shows what the actual colour of the wood would be and uh, under my thumb is where I went over when I was sanding it like that around my chest I went the entire skimmed, uh, skimmed off the side and yeah took the wax off that 
so that's a good tip when you're tired when you've had enough pack up don't carry on so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to try to repair that with a bit of a uh, bit of wax um, the bit of wax and dull it down because now I've took the tenon off I'm not going to be able to refinish it any other way but try to repair that and spot repair it rather than try to refinish the entire thing so I am very happy with it apart from the stupid mistake I made right at the very end that's the end of the video so I hope you've enjoyed it or at least most of it anyway and not so much the last 10 minutes I'll skip a hell of a lot of it um, I'll speed up oh, fuck's sake